update on uh, the Kid Rock story uh, <laughs> yesterday. A uh, listener wrote this in. At JM Jenks, he says... I actually went to Kid Rock's Big Ass Honky Tonk. My wife dragged me there against my will because we were doing a pub crawl on Broadway in Nashville. And all I can say is if there was a guy swinging around his colostomy bag that night that I was there, it would have been 10 times more fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, yeah, after taking the virtual tour yesterday, it was like I was saying, there's, there's four <laughs> floors of this bar. The top one's a rooftop kind of half area. <laughs> And every single part of the bar is decorated the exact same. It's just pictures of the Kid Rock Rolling Stone cover, and <laughs> it's just the, the red, one, the, the red one. suit from Devil Without a Cause. It's just album the like cover. Planet Hollywood, but it's all Kid Rock. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's, he he got a discount on prints of his Rolling yeah. Stone cover, but it was only if they used the same picture over and over. Yeah, it was just fucking. It's a mess. <laughs> it looks like a mess. You it's know, it's not too far from Monell's, right? Yeah, it's in like broad. It's like downtown, like near like the Grand Ole Opry and shit like that. The yeah, Monell's is in Germantown, huh? Shout out to my Nashville people. I know something. It doesn't um, seem like Kid Rock's even a big enough name to sustain a bar, let alone a bar and grill. Yeah, but I this mean, he's had a lot, a lot of hits with his his crowd. Yeah. I guess had, he's you know. gotten to the point where he's old enough that his fans probably have a little money now. They got a wife and kids. They yeah, wanna and go they out on the town. Give them COVID. I feel like they're in the <laughs> last 10 years there has been like an extreme movement to everyone being a realtor yeah oh absolutely that's the game man property yeah. property ownership taking their notes from scientology keep the poor people away <laughs> that's what you buy that's what you buy property for yeah that's the weirdest shit in nashville is walking by their scientology center you're like oh they have who one. who the fuck is a scientologist in nashville yeah austin has one too Yep. Anywhere they think people hate themselves in their lives, which is basically everywhere. They yeah, but, it, thing. but that's their whole thing now is they're basically a real estate scam because they're a church so they can operate tax free. So uh, that's kind of their gimmick is they'll buy up, you know, high end real estate in places, pay no taxes on it. And then if they need some cash, flip that baby. Do you get to go clear if you start a new franchise? Like, Ooh, yeah, as an incentive. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it, I, I mean, that's may, might be a reason to move back to Birmingham and just you know start a Scientology <laughs> center there and like that downtown bank building they turn into lofts, like turn oh, that yeah. into the Scientology building. You can put the prison in the in the basement, I'm sure. <laughs> and then like you know, I'll they and, have and multiple for, prison floors. And, let's and, be honest. And for my troubles, I get to go clear. Hell yeah, dude. That's I mean. And That's then everybody's going to be jealous. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the mover, the shaker <laughs> of Birmingham. <laughs> People will say, "What is Joe Rains doing?" And they'll say, "Let's do that." He's a fucking power broker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking Scientology king of Iron City. If any of us ever owned property in our lives, I'd be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be that hard if we were like, hey, Wyoming, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, could, shit. I could, look, we could afford one acre somewhere. <laughs> That's I mean, not what I'm talking about. I'm all for Let's get a compound, you guys. Let's get, like, all the money we can. And, like, I'm sure it's between the three of... Twelve of us. Grand. If we could get together with a few, a few grand each, maybe after like some inheritances, so probably mm. later get up to like you know, eight grand. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then buy like you know five hundred acres in Wyoming and like build a compound and like be crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about. Or we could just go to Slab City in uh in Salton Sea. I like being that's crazy here in LA. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, we could probably buy like a foot by foot property in LA. Yeah. <laughs> That true. is probably true. And turn it into a timeshare, and just, I'll, I'll stand in this this courtyard for a week. You you have next week, and then we'll, we'll share a tent. <laughs> we'll Airbnb street. the rest of it. We'll have a tent, you know. Yeah, and it'll be like yeah, it'll be a B and B tent. I have, what's the weirdest shit that y'all have seen on those? Because uh, I know Sam, you've definitely been on there trying to fill rooms and stuff. As far as a living situation on those uh, Facebook uh, LA leasing sites. Well, the weirdest that people who are contacting me are just the weirdest no, people like, are trying to. No, like the weirdest situation because I saw like a guy was yeah, selling. I remember a, the. Well, there was the the one that we talked about on the show where the guy was selling the loft yeah, above the bathroom with, with no one. railing. That's psychotic. Where you could just easily roll over in bed and then fall twelve feet to the floor of the living room. Uh, but then I, I also recently saw one that was someone was selling. 
uh, their mini Airstream trailer in their driveway. Oh, God. So you could live in a little Airstream trailer. I, I honestly did see something like that before. Yeah. A lot of people try to do the really bootleg back house thing. Yeah. A lot of people try to do the, like, uh, live in a two-bedroom that has, like, a master suite like this one in a very small room. And yeah. And they try to rent out the small room for as much, if not more, than the... Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes you can tell, like, the the price they're trying to rent for is basically the amount of rent for the whole unit. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. And it's trying and to it's fuck just, them. Yeah. It's just like, so <laughs> That's the dream. It's just How so much obvious. Is your rent? None. But then you, you look at this, you look at the place and it's just like, you'd have to be a fool to pay this much money to live in this sort of place with this person who's obviously insane. Yeah. My favorite is when people post on those sites and they're like calling people out by name. They're like, uh-huh. if if you were trying to rent to a guy named Mike Johnson, mm-hmm. don't believe anything he says. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Whether like they have like cons. There's one. I saw one. It was like two guys who like they'll pay the first two months rent and then never again. And they'll just keep bragging about what they steal from their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> they drive oh. a Ford Explorer. Do not trust these guys oh so you mean they're cool <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> yeah. i don't know yeah it's always just people who are trying to pull griffs that are so obvious uh, yeah trying to specifically trying to take advantage of people is that right. that's what it feels like when it's really bad sometimes you just look at it and the price is crazy for like a super small place or yeah. real shitty neighborhood oh i'm or just living in like a closet near the beach costs <laughs> like a billion dollars per month yeah I'm, I'm still constantly amazed that when i was trying to move to la i basically was using craigslist at the time uh-huh. and mailed out you know the same email to like 50 yeah. things that were in my price range and the fact that the one I ended up going with turned out to be not just real, but like I had that roommate for years, you know? So. Yeah. You get lucky sometimes. Yeah. I mean, so it is yeah. possible. My, my first apartment here was on Craigslist. That's you, right. Yeah. I called you and you were like, it's, it's like uh, not the best neighborhood, but it's not like scary. They, I guess, yeah, this could be okay. What was it like in S- uh, yeah. Silver Lake or somewhere? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the 101 over on... Uh, it wasn't under the 101. It was like next to the 101 <laughs> where like you would see homeless people pooping in pizza boxes. That was my introduction. That was my introduction to LA is like first day here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm... Hooray for Hollywood. Yeah, and look and then see a guy just poop in front of people on the sidewalk and they're just completely unfazed and walking. <laughs> Walk by him as he's just pooping there, and yeah. no one's re- acknowledging. What's happening. You know, I was like, oh, so this will be this city yeah, cool. It's fun. So there's what the guy eating a, a melon with a switchblade. No, that was MacArthur Park oh, when, okay. when Wes and I moved into the uh, the MacArthur Park uh, murder mansion. We saw a homeless guy. One homeless guy was like rubbing the rosary a little too hard. Like, what did you do? <laughs> and then he was another, trying to jerk off the rosary. It was bad. And uh, <laughs> then the second guy we saw, like, dude, on the edge of MacArthur Park, was I made the a, Virgin Mary come. Um, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I definitely uh, saw a guy pissing in the McDonald's, not even parking lot, just pissing with his dick facing towards the street. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and this other guy were walking past, and he just did the like circular finger by the ear, the like person is crazy right, motion. Right. <laughs> he just like kind of <laughs> nodded at me and did that and was like, Yes, sir. I also think he's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. And we just went on our merry ways. Yeah. I saw that on a tour one time, a guy facing the street. Just mm-hmm. pissing into the street, ankle uh, pants around the ankles too. Oof. Like he was a little kid at a bowling alley. Yeah, you know. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you see pe- like grown people doing that. It's at, the funniest in bathrooms. It it it's such pants. a funny thing to do. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's never not funny. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be laughing because the only people that would do that would be like mentally ill people. Yeah. But like, it's yeah. still hilarious to yeah. see like, a grown up do that. But yeah, this guy was on the corner of Hollywood and Highland, like the middle of Hollywood, just fucking right into the gutter. And uh, and we had to, you know there's no turn on there's no turn on the red there you can't turn right on red so we were just stuck there and this guy was just right there you know, what'd you say <laughs> I uh, I'm the master of changing the subject people yeah. were like oh my god and, like the mom was just like oh my god and I was like as you can see pretty well- woman was filmed over yeah, exactly. here on the other side of the street which <laughs> yeah, is away from that man I was like uh, this is uh, look up here this is Ripley's believe it or not wow <laughs> believe it or not there's a man pissing in the gutter. <laughs> yeah, that's a little it's a tough to explain to people how normal it becomes. There's did you see the piano yesterday? They, oh yeah, we have a moved, piano on our street. They had moved it from the sidewalk into the street. 
just like in a spot where a car would park. I mean, but now for, it's, it's not for, there. It's and, for everyone. It's not there anymore, though. So oh, no. I think they even they realize like, OK, this is a bit ridiculous. So we shouldn't take up this parking <laughs> well, spot I mean, with a piano. It, the, the, the level of, of shantydom that is there is is absolutely <laughs> a chef's kiss. They have actually turned it into housing. It's like for real. They're mm. using like the gated area and the brick wall the, and they're running the, the electricity from the light poles. Oh, yeah. I mean, their quality of living is not that different than ours. No, I, hey, we don't have AC, man. We're all yeah. just on the same. <laughs> no AC. Like, they have to cook with trash fires. Yeah, so. That's true. Yeah. That, that and it, you know, unless your toilet breaks, you get that. Yeah, that's true. But if your toilet broke, well, I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> they're having trouble getting vaccines out to people who don't want them of course, <laughs> so of course. we've now reached that point in the pandemic you know i uh, i kind of always suspected it would come to this as soon as they announced there was a vaccine i was like uh-oh <laughs> we've got yeah. a problem it's like of course the fucking covid deniers are gonna did jenny mccarthy get the vaccine that's, Ooh, that's a great question that's what i would like to know did, Ooh, well, she, did, did, did she take the covid vaccine i bet she did i bet she did dude i have a friend that says he doesn't trust doctors because they lie and he also got the vaccine i was like well <laughs> I didn't want to be a dick, but I was just like, so wait, don't you hate doctors? And I mean, I he's feel like, like, yeah, but you got the vaccine. He's like, yeah. And then he just didn't say anything after that. Hmm. It's a certain level. I think you have to be to not get the vaccine like that. The For porn, sure. The Tiki porn, uh, triple X porn uh, theater, yeah. theater is open and operating now. Oh, let's check it out. And I was just like, all right. <laughs> That's so, right. Well, even the perverts are getting their vaccines. So there's really no excuse <laughs> of even these guys. And they were coming in droves. I saw just walking by in the space of walking a block. I saw like five middle aged dudes, like scary uncles, like speed mm. walking inside. Like they had been saving that orgasm for the last year. Of course. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking to beat off in public, that's the spot, you, I guess. Yeah, you'd have to take to the streets the whole last year. I mean, year. At, at this point, there is no other reason to jerk off in a movie theater other than you, you get off on jerking off around other people, really. Oh, yeah. Because totally. it's porn yeah. and it's free, and you can just do that at oh, home yeah, and, yeah, not, and not go to jail. Maybe they don't have the internet or a <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> well, like, just use your memory. <laughs> it's, 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 the memory of the other times you jerked you off in a theater. theater. <laughs> uh, the latest Jenny McCarthy vaccine news is from 2013 so yeah. she has wisely chosen to shut the fuck up on this issue i think yeah, she got pretty owned on yeah. that whole subject <laughs> i want to know is the the anti va vaccine for babies because it causes autism group are they pro covid vaccine that's probably not they're not pro any <laughs> vaccine yeah yeah i think so it's well it's you know it's a similar thing where it it, it might be two separate camps for all we know yeah but Maybe not. I think I it's know. the thing that they just are convinced we don't know it's in vaccines, basically. Yeah, so that yeah. anything in there could fuck you up. Cause yeah, it, it reminds me that I've now had a kind of a fantasy about getting together a flat earth convention uh -huh. and a hollow earth convention together. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they can't. I mean, they're both loons, but mm -hmm. they, they can't believe the same thing because the earth has to be round to be hollow. You know, can't be a hollow flat Maybe earth. Maybe if it was like an eclair. The eclair, eclair. <laughs> it was a donut, yeah. If it was it's an a, eclair earth theory. That's what I've started today. The eclair, the eclair earth theory where the earth <laughs> is flat and also there's a hollow earth, but it is made of delicious vanilla cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the hollow earth thing to come back because it was such a plot point in Kong versus Godzilla. You know, yeah, it was like the whole movie, basically. Yeah, that's where they. That's where they. You know what? That that was. It was a video game. It was a video game movie. Oh yeah, yeah. And no, was I was totally, saying it made me feel like I was playing. There's especially like post COVID, like it's almost you know a lot of people are like, oh, film is dead, you know, and it's like yeah, it might be, but it's now like it's just content. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, it's like okay. Well, better. also, it's like they ha they can't. Hollywood's not haven't been working this past year, so if you get any kind of new movie at this point, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. Like you're right, get, we're right. getting straight to DVD movies as the movies, <laughs> so just chill out. Like, yeah. Just accept this as the weirdo stuff. Yeah, or but you I, just not watch it also and not support that sort of thing. That's true. Is my opinion on it. Because <laughs> then they look at anything and they're like, well, I guess they love any movie with an animated gorilla. Uh, and then uh, we uh -oh. just get 10 more Donkey Kong <laughs> well, Country movies oh, or something. Dude, I would, I would fucking pop for a Donkey Kong Country movie. That would be great. <laughs> Let's get Diddy in there. Let's get yeah. Dixie in there. Let's oh, get the whole fucking of course, gang. The little baby one uh -huh. that everybody <laughs> hates from DK3. <laughs> fucking useless. Truly the scrappy do of the Donkey Kong gang. <laughs> even more he scrappy do is at least more likable but <laughs> speaking of putting stuff in your body that unite 
might not know what it is. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> remember yesterday we were discussing the secret ingredient in the energy drink? Yeah, we got our, our friend the chemist uh, yeah. responded to us. It, apparently, it's used as a metal analysis method. Wait, what is the... <laughs> the it's a modifier. For the stuff we drank is uh, a modifier for a metal analysis method. The, the bucked up? Yeah, the stuff. Remember the ingredient <laughs> where we were like, I don't know what that means. It's called bucked up. Yeah, we we had a bucked up uh, flavor uh, gym the and juice. anhydrous. Yeah, anhydrous. Uh, yeah, it's uh, used caffeine. So every aspect of this is a is a pun. Every <laughs> aspect of the company is a pun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, on that one specifically. Yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, it's made in Utah, and I was saying that the ingredients list doesn't say caffeine. It says anhydrous caffeine, and I was wondering if that was some sort of weird Mormon workaround. It's like, oh, well, we can't put real caffeine into it because that's that's against, you know, LDS policy. But maybe we can uh, put in this other weirder chemical. It's a, but... it's a product or reagent created and it contains no water. Oh, OK. So, so it's like a powder. Yeah, basically. I think it's a nasty powder. <laughs> so, so they're just like, we'll just make it gross. Basically. Yeah. Put in that. That's probably what that what terrible makes, aftertaste. What makes was. you think to do that? Are they making this in the same factory where they're like doing metal metal it's, work? I mean, it's probably. Co- I mean, like everything else, cost cutting measure. I think yeah, I'm it's sure. probably like part I of the preservative. A, we used to be in the metal too. game. Now we're in the energy drink game. <laughs> we, we had some leftover chemicals. We said this. You know what? Throw that shit in oh, there. Let's man. see what happens. Shout out to our friend uh, at Andy underscore Vandy twenty twelve. Uh, he says, "So I'm the chemist that follows the show and." Hydrous caffeine is just caffeine in a powder form. They probably use that stuff because they don't have any ingredients that contain natural caffeine, so they just add the powder as an isolate. The word anhydrous uh, just means without water. Powder <laughs> caffeine. So it's like those pills. That's like, yeah, it's what, basically uh, no, cheap yeah, uh, trucker speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah no like dose. The, the wealthy LDS members do is they do lines of uh, anhydrous uh, <laughs> caffeine. Yeah, They're just in the bathroom. Donald Trump does probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, key bumps of this shit. It's like it's not cocaine. Jesus loves me, and they're just doing. <laughs> <laughs> line after a line of this. <laughs> well, the weird thing about it is that there's nothing... It, it The Book of Mormon, from what I understand, does not actually prevent caffeine because uh-huh. they hadn't isolated that compound in the 1800s. They didn't. It outlaws hot drinks, meaning coffee and tea. That's a bummer. It gets cold there from what I... Right, heard. yeah, which I'm like, fucking who wants to go to Utah in December <laughs> without a goddamn cup of coffee or something? What that's about cider. soups? Or what about soup? soups? Uh, I guess that's a that's a, a, sa- a savory broth, you know? It's not <laughs> yeah. quite a drink. But they extrapolated that in the 20th century to mean caffeine, mm. which is why, uh, you know, people who are a little looser, it's why you see Mitt Romney drinking 5,000 Diet Cokes in that Mitt documentary oh. he made. Because mm. I was always like, hey, now, what are you? Are you Mormon or are you not? <laughs> well, the Diet Coke people are insane that's like a whole different cult <laughs> absolutely well uh again you, you had that oh just a beautiful segue speaking of putting trash in the body uh we've got our uh you know we've we've moved on from my my road expedition now we are into uh uh energy drinks that we found locally this one is central la central 99 LA. cent store 99 cent store right next to my beloved rip it case uh we found this one from uh, mountain dew and it is called mountain dew rise Tropical sunrise. Okay. And, you know, and I just got to say, happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Oh, yeah. Cinco de Drinco, as Joe calls it. Cinco de what? Drinco. I don't even drink. (laughs) (laughs) Joe does not even drink. I had four beers while we went fishing for six hours. (laughs) Let's go ahead and sample the Mountain Dew Rise, everybody. Kind of smells like regular Mountain Dew, a little sweeter, maybe. Oh, my God. Way fucking sweeter. Yeah, it tastes like pineapple. Yeah, it's just pineapple. But it's the best so far. It's yeah, the it best does, one. It does yeah. taste good. It tastes like yeah. pineapple soda. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's way too sweet. This one has immune support. Oh, hell yeah. 180 milligrams of caffeine. And, best of all, a mental boost. Check the... Uh, do y'all feel smarter? <laughs> Check the expiration date on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we did find this there. at the 99 cent store. Uh, so this one is that can't be right. <laughs> what? That that is upsetting if that's true. 2018. Oh, that's a two. I thought that was a one. OK, yeah. So July 26, 2021. So okay. I thought it was a one. I was like 2011. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> I think. It seems like it should be more carbonated is all I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That it's that it's it's getting close enough to the expiration date to where, you know, it's it's losing a little bit of its flavor. Probably some of its smell. Definitely. 
It's not losing any of the sugar. I mean, yeah. it, it's definitely way better than anything of the other ones I've had. The other ones were foul. This, it one, doesn't this have, one is passable. It doesn't have the nasty aftertaste most energy drinks yeah. have. Yeah. Well, this one also says it has no added sugar. So it's only got four grams. So it's mostly that uh, aspartame or whatever the fuck is in there. Well, that makes okay. me feel better about drinking this. I'm going to drink it all. Oh, it's got white grape juice. Okay. Ah. <laughs> just like the tropics. Or communion at Protestant churches. <laughs> <laughs> Never That's been. the communion at the at the Scientology Birmingham for sure. All rise for Mountain Dew rise. <laughs> I mean, I could totally believe do in this. Z New. I just need a, a robe. <laughs> Every leader needs a robe. That's all I need. <laughs> oh my! Forgot to put my phone on silent. Where are my manners? You just want people to think you're getting a phone call. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. I'm so very busy. I've been booked up. <laughs> the f- deal with all these energy drinks is they never say they always say don't give to pregnant women that yeah, makes me never yeah. feel good about it <laughs> dude do you want your baby to be born with extreme yeah. fuck yeah I do I want my baby to be <laughs> jump out of that you vagina and in. start spiking <laughs> footballs and screaming about to... fights and shit I, I want to see this guy go. I want to yeah. see the blood vessel on my baby's forehead bulge yeah with just... like extreme excitement to be alive I'm just thinking it's like in other categories of like cigarettes and right, <laughs> alcohol right, right. Right. and other things like that it makes I want, me wonder I want my baby to swing the umbilical cord like football players with those giant ropes so they're just like <laughs> dude my and baby came and coffee instantly <laughs> my baby came out being able to do a fly knee attack he superman punched the doctor <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah that's how I feel after I drink this. <laughs> like I want to fight every enemy I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and everyone is an, is an enemy. Yeah, now I have new enemies. We got a couple questions that uh, that came in uh, that we didn't get to last time that I wanted to uh, get to now. This first question comes to us from at Apoc Pod, the Apocalypse and Review podcast, and I'm going to be doing that this Monday night. I'm going to be on that show talking about Deep Impact and Armageddon. We're doing a, a Meteor Strike 1998 double header on that one. I like Deep Impact better. I you. haven't seen it since 1998. I'm pretty jazzed. Like Armageddon is, uh, I rewatched last year. I think we talked about it on the show when uh, Daniel Magnan was here and. Uh, you know, I, I didn't watch it in 1998 in the context of like, this is a Michael Bay movie. I didn't know. I didn't know about directors. I was mm-hmm. fucking 12, you know. Yeah. But now knowing what I know, I'm like, oh, this is like beautiful. It's like just a beautiful piece of trash. Like, yeah. it's outstanding. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, APOC pod, uh, top three chicken wings, restaurant and or style. That's hard. Oh, yeah, that is really hard. Because the restaurant wise, it's going to be a non chain. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, have a favorite restaurant wing. I mean, fast food wing would be, I guess, Wingstop. Yeah, uh, yeah, Wingstop or uh, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I suppose. I, yeah. I really haven't had enough of the Buffalo Wild Wings to be. I don't know. I don't I mean, think I've ever really eaten them other than once or twice. Well, I, I wanted to say, uh, at least for LA, the Korean fried chicken wings. Fucking good. incredible. Uh, Kyo Chan and uh, the other one, the hilariously named Kentucky 77. <laughs> that one's fantastic. There's a bunch from Chicken Day. Oh, uh, yeah. Chicken Day just, is good. You know, the classic Asian sauce of the sweet oh, and man, it's spicy. The best. But I mean, you got to almost go with the classic buffalo hot wing for, yeah, the, sure. for the original. I mean, I all pretty much all the pizza chains with the exception of Papa John's have good wings. Papa John's, I don't think Papa so. John's <laughs> wings are like an offense to chicken. Oh yeah, I mean, and I'll tell you, every pl- every pizza place I've ever worked out that had wings, the wings were just frozen in a bag and they just ran them through the oven. Yeah, they're a disgrace. Yeah, yeah, whatever. They're not good. When I worked at Little Caesars, that was what it was. Yeah, the Little yeah. Caesar wings are fucking a nightmare. The yeah. only thing, I, I mean, I can tell you as someone who worked there in high school, the only thing at Little Caesars you should ever eat are the cheese sticks. And, yeah. and the, the breadsticks and the cheese sticks are literally the only thing you should eat. Why do you say that? Because the dough is just—it's like we make it. Then we we made it in store. It was like the cheese. It was like Cisco everything. It was like the cheapest <laughs> things, and like you left it out like all the time. So none of the dough was ever like done. <laughs> everything about it was just like ram shot. Just like fast <laughs> because it, fast food. In yeah, because like we, th- if there was any kind of rush, you like you were just getting like the most thrown together bullshit ever, and like there's always bug problems. It was just like it's yeah. just not where you should eat. But like the uh, the breadsticks and the cheese sticks were like the things you just can't fuck up. They're always the good. bugs don't go there. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's <laughs> the like the way you do it is it's like so. Um, <laughs> By order, because you can't just be like, we're going to, well, the breadsticks you do, but, but like cheese sticks, you have to pretty much make that when you order it because it's like 
its own its own plate. Uh huh. Yeah, its, it's own a, size and its own thing. So there's got to be stretched out by yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like its own thing. So like it's more likely to be like at that moment fresher than the uh-huh. shit that's been literally like that's the thing about hot and ready. Is they would just literally sit out <laughs> uncovered for like twelve <laughs> hours just to be able to throw them in when you needed them. So it's like yeah, this shit's gonna taste like f- like five dollars. Yeah, it's really gonna taste <laughs> shitty. You gotta sometimes you know when you go there and you just snagged a freshie. Yeah, as I that's call true. It. You, yeah. You, <laughs> the, the people at insiders know the uh it's when you hold, try to hold it up by the underside and you're like oh damn this is burning my hand there you go and then you look at the top of it it's so greasy that it'll burn your mouth if you even attempt yeah, to yeah. eat it yep <laughs> that's when you know you got it good mm. the best thing to do with little caesars though is get one and don't eat it and then put it in your fridge and then reheat it the next day yeah it I'm, tastes way better i'm a i'm a big reheating pizza guy it's 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 like a stew or anything. The next day, the tomato sauce and the cheese and grease mixed together yeah. in the fridge. You I, would you re, like? Aren't you supposed to reheat it in a skillet? I I mean that's you can. I do the oven. I, see, I, yeah, I mean you could do the oven. Honestly, though, like I think it's just because we always just ate pizza on Friday, Friday night pizza night kind of thing. Uh, whenever we had pizza. So reheated pizza to me equals it's Saturday morning. I'm going to watch some cartoons. I got the whole fucking day off. So it's like partly like a psychological nostalgia mm-hmm. thing. But goddamn, dude. Yeah, just some reheated fucking in the microwave pizza where it's all kind of like uneven and no, it's not all rivers. I love no. it. I fucking love no, it, I, I dude. I hate the cold part where it's like, yes, hot, yes, hot, yes, hot, ice cold. You yeah. got to either go <laughs> hot or cold. You can't do the cold gross pizza medium. Is psychotic. Who's eating cold pizza? That's gross. I didn't say it was cold. It was, it was uh, no, hot in as some a, spots. As a general thing oh, yeah. bro you smoke weed don't even <laughs> act like you've never done it i mean i've done it before but i've always regretted it and been like man it would have been so much better if i just warmed that up i never <laughs> i never think that um, because when i want cold pizza i want cold pizza <laughs> i just have never in my life been like you know it'd be good right now like not cooked food uh but yeah for this question he says restaurant and or style uh so i'm gonna go for restaurant i mean the only one people don't you know i think it's a Sorry to Eric Nelson. <laughs> I think it's a toss up between Wingstop and Buffalo Wild Wings for number two and number three. Uh, you know, if there's some local place that's better, then fine. But just generally, and then I'm gonna put Kyochan at number one. Man, that those Korean chicken wings are the yeah. shit. Um, but I'm yeah, it's gonna put any non chain restaurant wings. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, Hooters is terrible. Yeah, no, p- yeah, Hooters there. is foul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as far as style goes. I'm kind of in this stage of my life moving into a dry rub period oh, with, uh, with 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 uh, uh, like at Wingstop. They got the Cajun dry the Cajun rub. That's rub. good. I mean, I, I, and I like a me, lemon pepper for me. It depends on it, what I'm eating. If I'm doing bone out, I want something sweet. So like a barbecue style. But if yeah. it's got the bone in, I want it to be either be like OG style or yeah. or super incredible spicy. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. down. I'm down with you here. Yeah. Joe. Well, he yeah. said wings. I'm not counting the boneless wings or bullshit. That's a whole. That's yeah. chicken nuggets. Yeah, it's chicken nuggets. I'm I mean, talking with the bone. It's still fucking good. I mean, they're <laughs> fine. Yeah, they'll do in a pinch. My favorite thing was when they started doing that thing. At a certain point, I think in like during like the Obama years, the Food and Drug Administration made it so you can't call things that aren't what they are. Uh, like you can't claim it to be that if it's just that flavor or whatever. Like, so like, like oat milk is oat, oat drink, right? Well, the, well, the the one I remember specifically is they started calling things chocolatey instead of chocolate. Like, Ugh. what flavor is this? It's chocolatey. And then the other one that was hilarious was they started selling DiGiorno pizzas with wings, but because they weren't made from wing meat, they were made from pink slime. They had to call oh. them wings. W-Y-N-G-Z. I remember this. I thought this. that was I like, I thought that was like edgy marketing. No. They were like, we don't even no. spell them right. No, that's the federal government was like, you can't continue to call this meat. <laughs> well, I, see that. I just feel rewarded for hating DiGiorno. I've always uh. thought DiGiorno Porno was the worst. Absolutely. There, there was a point where they were one of the best, but then every other company caught up yeah. and left them. DiGiorno and us. Freshetta are the ones where it feels like you just ate an actual brick. It just <laughs> weighs on yeah, you. Yeah. Every time I eat frozen pizza now, I regret it. I, I used mean, to, I'll, I used I'll to fuck like with it. Tombstone. Tombstone to me is a happy, <laughs> a happy meal. I'll eat a Tombstone. Dude, that'll <laughs> fuck you up worse than anything. Or a Red Baron. I'll, Red Baron. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll nail a Red Baron. I'm all about that. Yeah. I'm a CPK guy now. 
CPKs makes me sick every time I eat it. <laughs> yeah, they're not great. I don't know about wings. The last ones, the last new flavor I had that I really enjoyed was the Louis, Louisiana from Wingstop, but not the dry one. Oh, like the, the, yeah, the Cajun. Cajun's rub, I mean, not rub. I think Cajun it's just called sauce. Louisiana. They don't have yeah. a bad yeah. flavor. Uh -huh. There's not a single thing there that's I, uh, I disagree. I'm not a Parmesan garlic. I don't like that. It's not bad. I like the Parmesan garlic. Lemon pepper is the one I don't like. Oh, hey, see. it's good. You're going to dip good. lemon and ranch or blue cheese? Yeah. I don't nope, think nope. so. You're going to dip the lemon in the honey mustard. Boom. Ooh, I'll Honey go. mustard? Where the fuck do you get that from? Wingstop, Wingstop. has a cup oh, of honey mustard yeah. as a dipper because it works Ugh. for that. It also works with the barbecue sauce. You dip that in the honey mustard. Dude, I, oh, I'll, put, I'll down. put lemon pepper in all three at once. Ugh, so God. good. I <laughs> Ritter's think. also puts like his yogurt mixed with all his Indian food. The the, the palate cleanser oh, as the, so the mixture good, for all of it. <laughs> oh, Which makes no sense. Ugh, no, rivers. it's good. It's good. Get that, get that tang going. I the meal. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. I do want to say I hate the barbecue sauce wings. Oh, sure. It's just like if you want barbecue chicken, just have barbecue chicken. <laughs> it's so good. If you get boneless barbecue and then dip it in honey mustard, hey, now that's that's a whole that's Flavor Town right there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to visit Flavor Town. <laughs> I'll go to Columbus, I, I, Ohio. I don't want to eat. In, I mean, I don't want to live in Flavor Town, but I'll go there every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Check it out. Check it out. Have mozzarella's French fries, mozzarella stick, French fry, chicken popper, barbecue yeah. wing, pizza, chicken fill, fries. Fill dude. my suitcase with donkey sauce and get the hell out of there. You know, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you don't have to stay. You're not taking it on as a personality trait. You're just having a good time. You know. This was uh, from uh, at BC Skins. Any good book recommendations? Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh. I was Confederacy of Dunces is a solid read. That's a great one. If that's, you like Danny McBride at all, that's the book for you. Ooh, man. Yeah. That's who that's who they that's should who it should be. That's who they should cast because it's almost tailor made for his style of humor. The the confident shithead. Like we, yeah, where fuck. Like, uh, like he's dumb as rocks, but he <laughs> thinks he's the smartest person in the room. That is Danny McBride's <laughs> humor. They should cast him. That's that, and it would be perfect. God, that's a good because that's one of those books that I think almost every decade some comedic actor will get rumored to be in the adaptation, yeah. and then it just never happens. Like it was, and it's like exactly like it was like in the eighties. It was like, oh, they're gonna make one with John Belushi, and then he fucking died. And then they were like, oh, they're gonna make one with Chris Farley, and then he fucking died. And yeah. then I think the last one I heard was Will Ferrell, which is like, no, 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 no. I think he was rumored and then dropped it. Yeah, yeah, but that but is I one mean, of those. It would be perfect with Danny McBride. Yeah, and then all you would need is like a, a, God, a strong a straight one. lady for the mom, and you're set. Yeah, give, give me a give me a Sally Field or oh, yeah. that would be good, or like a, a Bette Midler or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring back Bette Midler. Bring fuck. back Bette. Or, or hashtag bring back Bette. <laughs> bring back Bette. God, that'd be great. Yeah, that's one of those like it's the funniest book I've ever read, and it's just sitting there, and no one's ever made a fucking movie out of it. Yeah, that's one thing I've done throughout COVID so far, where I like I haven't accomplished anything or written any good new jokes, but I did read a bunch of books I used to lie about having read at parties. <laughs> like, any party, somebody be like, have you read this? I'd be like, totally. I like the guy. <laughs> The guy did great stuff. I remember the time and the thing at the car, and they like had this dinosaur. I think I remember that part, and it was all great. I read, I've read everything. I'm very learned. Uh, when I'd read like you know not much, but now I've read a bunch of books. What, what all? What, what was your favorite for the pandemic? Probably Confederate Confederate okay. Like I had read most of it, and then I finished it at the beginning. That was the first one where I was like, I'm gonna start doing this. I did not like uh, the Jack Kerouac book uh, on the road. On the road. Oh like, man, I was reading that, and I was like, this, it seems like he's on drugs. Like, I, I get why he was able to write this so quickly. This my, is stressing me out. My thing with that one is, like, he spends so much time praising Dean Moriarty, and then the guy fucking leaves him in Mexico. It's like, this guy sucks, dude. Neil Cassidy <laughs> is a fucking asshole. Why are you so on this dude's nuts? It's crazy. I quote unquote read on the road uh, by doing a I got a book on tape when I was delivering pizzas actually so I've only ever actually listened to it and it was Matt Dillon reading it oh god <laughs> so it's kind of fun to listen to it be read because it is supposed to be like kind of a, a zip bop boop, like a jazz like kind of you know rhythm based thing so it's a little bit better to have someone read it to you but yeah I, I enjoy on the road I could feel like yeah. it would be you know it, it was easier to read as just like I'm delivering pizzas and there's nothing else to do for sure the book I was going to recommend that I just finished is called heaven's ditch 
God, Gold, and Murder on the Erie Canal by Jack <laughs> Kelly. And it's a, a book that's all about the period from the 1820s to 1840s when they were building the Erie Canal through upstate New York and just all the crazy shit that happened because that is, speaking of Mormonism, that's when the Second Great Awakening happens. And so you've got, you know, essentially this rural area and then all of a sudden just the beast of fucking modern industrialism just pulls up. It's like, we're here, motherfuckers. And so all these people that have no idea how to deal with all of these workers and just people coming into their communities were like, God is having his vengeance. And so that's literally where you get Mormonism, Seventh Day Adventism, like everybody just starts going crazy. There was like a an anti Masonic party that arose. Uh, this guy was spreading a bunch <laughs> of fucking Freemasons, you guys. I tell you. <laughs> well, they were they were breakaways. It's weird how much it kind of uh, uh, mirrors. And this is going to sound wild, but QAnon in a weird way, because the anti-Masonic party was basically disappointed that Andrew Jackson didn't murder all the Masons. And so they did their own thing, which is very much like Trump's going to fucking arrest Hillary Clinton and have her killed. And then it didn't happen. And then they kind of spiral off into their own weird thing. But they the Masons did disappear a guy like the leader of the anti-Masonic uh, party or whatever. His name was William Morgan, and they no one knows what happened to him. He just fell off the face of the fucking earth. Uh, nice. But uh, And then there's also a great, uh, they talk about America's first daredevil. <laughs> Uh, who is this guy, Sam Patch, who uh, who jumped uh, his his most successful jump was he jumped 120 feet off of a platform into the rolling like bubbling base of Niagara Falls. He didn't jump off Niagara Falls, but he jumped off. No, because that would be crazy. Yeah, that would be insane. But he jumped off a 120 foot platform into the base of Niagara Falls and everybody he didn't come up and everybody's like, well, he's dead. And then he just popped up on a beach and everybody cheered. And so he decided to do it again at the Genesee River uh, up near Rochester. And uh, and then he died. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then happen. he 100% died. That will happen. Well, I, I think daredevils are a modern thing because back in the day like just being alive is a daredevil like this <laughs> shit yeah e- dude. eating that meat that's been in the smokehouse for a couple of months that's being a daredevil that's oh, probably yeah. like toxic poison i don't man. know people are <laughs> going over the falls in a barrel that was a little later this is 1829 this oh. is like yeah if you're like yeah. if you're like a pioneer on the oregon trail like crossing that river is you know daredevil as shit yeah no. <laughs> being, being, you're right being alive in 1829 yeah, is... like leaving everything you've ever known every person you've ever met to like the woods yeah. on the off hunch that <laughs> this might possibly be my land at right. some point. It's very unclear with how this government works because <laughs> I don't even know how the government works. And well, then they just go there and they're just <laughs> like, I'm across this river. Oh shit, it's 50 feet deep. I'm going to die. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the funniest thing about that time period and the reason it interests me so much, like, I mean, it's not just that time period. It's pretty much every time prior to pasteurization and like modern medicine. Yeah. Everyone is drunk all the fucking time because beer is clean and water is will kill you. Or like putting so, <laughs> liquor in water to like keep it like Yeah, you know. yeah, to sterilize it. Like it's so uh, it's it's almost never talked about in history, but you're like, yeah. yo, every historical figure prior to the twentieth century that you can think of <laughs> was fucking shit housed all, all the, the time. All the people was... <laughs> reporting were also shit faced. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah, it was just the well, normal I mean, if thing. You're, if you're alive back then, you'd be shit faced too. Like yeah. it, it would be awful. I wouldn't drink <laughs> Giardia water. I would drink whiskey all day if that's yeah. the if that's the choice. You know, Half, probably a third of the people got uncurable syphilis. Everybody's just walking. <laughs> yeah, around. Everything Everyone's Joe's just... bringing up is just something from Oregon Trail. <laughs> do you want to go through the river? <laughs> ah, you sunk. It's too deep. <laughs> ah, your whole party's got syphilis. I do now. like syphilis in <laughs> Oregon Trail. I do love the part of Oregon Trail where they all <laughs> fuck a bunch of native people and get syphilis. That's, that's, you that's try. You're supposed to forge the river, not. <laughs> Oh, you'll never make it to Fort Laramie because your brain is goop. <laughs> 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 the funnest part was the hunting. Let's be honest. Guys. Oh my god, it hard, dude! But it was fun. It my was middle fun, school yeah. it was rewarding, especially was the green screen because you could just hold down the space bar and the arrow uh-huh. and like a Terminator just shoot bullets in every direction. Yeah, like oh, with the shotgun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're gonna just be. No, it's any of the guns. You just had to keep it in a circle. It was like you could kill like everything on the screen. It was awesome. I played that that second version like this. You know, there was the, I played the the old one on the flop like the literal yeah. fucking floppy the disc, green screen the green screen one but then when I we got the time I got to middle school they had a, a CD ROM one mm-hmm. and I remember every kid at my school would just start the game because it was one of the few games that, that you were allowed to play at the library yeah because you can learn. Yeah, yeah you're, it's about learning. <laughs> Life is pain, children. <laughs> but yeah, you would. These kids would just start the game, 
and then they would just immediately like, all right, we're setting out on the old trail. Oh, you want to go hunting? And then they would just do that the whole time. And at one point, the library, I guess they just looked over and every kid was just like, yeah, kill, kill, kill. And this is like around the it time practice. of practice. It's like how Call of Duty turns people in the to, to killers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, this was around the time of Columbine, too. And so they literally put up signs all over the library that said no hunting allowed in Oregon Trail, which just meant you, how do you, get you food? can't win the game. It's yeah. fucking I guess you impossible. You can buy it sometimes. That was the thing. It's like yeah. you had to. You a, had to like barter, so you're like, I'll trade you my daughter for 400 pounds of flour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go there, which is probably more realistic. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because also you could sell the meat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. win the goddamn game, and and so yeah, there was a. Uh, I think those signs only stood up for like. Do a you week. remember uh, Yukon Trail, like the, the the branch off Yukon Trail where you went no. to the Yukon to uh, to mine it's for a, gold? It was the same thing as Oregon Trail. Uh, okay, but you just. It was a lot of stepping, and so it's just a screen steps a lot. But you like it was the same thing, and you like would go f- try to find gold, and it was not satisfying. <laughs> at all. Yeah, that's not really a game you can make a sequel yeah. to. Once you find <laughs> Oregon, that's pretty much the end of the game. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's my that's my recommendation. Heaven's Ditch, check that out by Jack Kelly. So I got a story from Fargo, North Dakota. A Minnesota woman is accused in Cass County District Court of disrupting the funeral of her ex-boyfriend by recklessly driving an SUV through a Fargo cemetery. (laughs) Blair R. Witten, who, according to court records, is either 28 or 29, faces one count. (laughs) But I don't know what that means. Like, she's like, I'm not telling you how old I am, (laughs) Mr. Judge. (laughs) She's like like John Lovitz on SNL. 28, 29, 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the ticket. (laughs) That's the ticket. Uh, She faces one count of misdemeanor reckless endangerment stemming from an incident on Saturday at Riverside Cemetery in South Fargo. According to court documents, several members of the public flagged down officers and said that a vehicle had been driving over grave sites and tried to run people over. (laughs) So they're having a funeral. Was she doing donuts in the cemetery? It sounds like it. It really, I'm pretty sure. We we, we loved going to mud and this is how he would want him to go. (laughs) That's the part of grieving they don't tell you about. That's where you have to knock it over gravestones. The the fun part. (laughs) Flicking off his family. (laughs) He loved me more. Uh, An officer detained a female driver on the north side of the cemetery who identified herself as Witten. The father of the deceased told police that he witnessed Witten driving a SUV at high speed across the cemetery and passing by the funeral several times. So they're having a funeral and there's just a fucking woo, fucking crazy. Did he put it in the will that she couldn't come or something? Uh, Like, why was she was she showing off? Was she intimidating? Uh, So it's the ex girlfriend uh, of the of the deceased. So has she she, like been checked out for murder for this guy? (laughs) So the dad said uh, that uh, she frightened him. Uh, He added that Witten was not wanted at the funeral. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. I think it's safe to say there, that there she it frightened is. them as a safe. That's a safe of something. Yeah. I just I just wonder why she wasn't wanted at this funeral. <laughs> she seems cool. <laughs> That's a bit of a, gr- a long grudge to hold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, uh, it seems like she's trying to set up an alibi. It's like where were you on the night of the murder? Hey, everybody saw me driving all over that city. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, couldn't have possibly murdered anyone. Everyone knows where I was. <laughs> a witness told police that he was approaching Witten's parked vehicle after the burial to ask her to leave. When Witten suddenly accelerated towards him, causing him to jump out of the way in fear for his life, the witness said that Witten was not welcome at the funeral because she had made harassing posts on social media about the ex-boyfriend's death. So, like, ooh. how how do you make harassing statements about a death? I, I would like, assume. I'm glad this motherfucker's right. Dead I would assume that. somebody wrote "R.I.P. So and So," and she was just like, "Oh, fuck him, fuck him. rest in piss, Donnie." Yeah, fuck I'm you, dri- Donnie, and your weird crooked dick. Yeah, I'll just wait. I'm gonna drive over his <laughs> grave. People say they're gonna walk over their grave. I'm gonna drive over <laughs> his grave, and I'm gonna do it like five times in front of his family, so they'll know they all fucked up. I- I'm gonna put a figure eight on his face with my SUV. <laughs> Uh, the witness. Oh yeah, that guy must have been really good at sex or something. <laughs> right? Huge that's, dick. That's, that's the only thing that that's explains prob- that's all. That's probably this. what killed him is the giant dick. Yeah. He probably like. <laughs> fell on top of him and he couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Witten was arrested and taken to Cass County Jail. She entered a plea of not guilty. So that's uh, that's bold. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> like a few fu- a fucking funeral saw you do this and it's like I didn't. Hey, this could be a uh, <laughs> mental <laughs> not guilty because of crazy. You know, that's true. Yeah, or she's gonna be like, I just got lost. The roads weren't clearly defined, and I thought I was on the <laughs> road, but it turns out I was just driving over <laughs> graves. Different, yeah, I was actually trying to drive over a different funeral. 
roll, and I just got confused. <laughs> Would you believe I was trying to get off of the graves? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to ask for directions for how to get out of this graveyard. I got glaucoma. I don't see so good. I didn't know where I was. I thought it was bumpy, but I, you know, I go off roading, so I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I have four wheel drive. It's fine. <laughs> but I'm sorry. You're telling me I can't go mud in here. See, well, I, did, I did not know that. That's the thing about graveyards these days is you don't have too many like vertical tombstones anymore. Right, Everybody right. just basically goes with the flat kind of placard thing. Yeah, probably much more reasonable well, cost wise. I, I, I found that's that. probably why that where they first had sex. So she was like, <laughs> she was really more of like sending him off. It was, yeah, yeah. It's a, in memory of Elizabeth Reed situation. Yeah. Uh, no, I found out that's called a memorial park when they're all when all the graves are are flat. And then it's a graveyard if they're actually standing. So they're vertical. not even buried in the place? Huh? Then the, with the memorial yard? Or is that just like urns and ashes? No, no. A shit? memorial yard is like what you... If uh-huh. you just say like a graveyard, like with the tombstones that just oh. stick up. But then if it's a uh, a memorial park, like we have Forest Lawn here where mm. all the celebrities are buried. There's They're all flat, you know, on the ground. Or they're in columbariums. Mas- yeah, mausoleum. Yeah. Yeah. My tummy hurts and I'm sweaty. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You drank a Mountain Dew Rise. And you're not supposed to be pregnant when you drink this. So. I'm definitely feeling pregnant. <laughs> I got this one from uh, uh, the unfortunately named Chauvin, Louisiana. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good is going to happen nope. in this city or state. <laughs> 38-year-old Dawn Marie Bay was arrested Friday and charged with multiple counts of indecent behavior with a juvenile and contributing to the delinquency of a juvenile at Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office in a news release. Terrebonne Parish School District officials confirmed Bay worked in the lunchroom at Lakash Middle School in Chauvin or Chauvin, about 70 miles southwest of New Orleans. So this is the lunch lady. Mm. It's a very good start. It's getting arrested. Uh, the school is where authorities they say that she met some of the teens who attended her regular overnight parties. <laughs> <laughs> so she's cool as fuck, y'all. You know, there's there's absolutely this, a uh, this is what happens when you sweet talk her into an extra slice of pizza. <laughs> she starts getting, <laughs> she gets sweet like, on you. Is this what that ideas. movie Ma's based off of? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bay has since been fired. Quote She was a cafeteria worker and was is the appropriate term because she's no longer employed with us, uh, Superintendent Philip Martin said. Bay's arrest was the result of a weeks-long investigation police say was sparked by a complaint from a concerned parent whose son was involved. Uh, Deputies were alerted on April 21st about occasions where several teens had allegedly gone over to the lunch lady's house. uh, (laughs) during the best beginning to (laughs) (laughs) it. We went over to the lunch lady's house. (laughs) Dude, where did you get all that beer? Lunch lady's house. It's awesome. Uh, during the visits, the boys allegedly drank alcohol and watched pornography. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, That's bad. I mean, it's... Hey, you kids know what porno is? <laughs> I know you're 15, so you definitely do. All right, all right. You see what he's doing to the vagina there? That's what I want you to do to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, was she watching it with him? Or was yeah. She- oh, she was having, like, old school 70s stag parties, it sounds like, with a bunch of fucking I mean, 15-year-olds. So yeah, so she was grooming them. Yeah. That's- that would be funny if she wasn't watching porn with them. She was just like, here's some here's some Ball. beers and some porno boys. I'll be in the other room. <laughs> boys will be boys. Yeah, I mean, that is the plot of Ma, basically. <laughs> that, uh, the boys were between 13 and 16 years old, the sheriff's office said, and further investigation revealed that some had spent the night at the woman's house. It's Le- fucking hot. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bay was brought in for questioning Friday and charged with eight counts of indecent behavior with a juvenile, and uh, she was booked into jail on a $50,000 bond and later bonded out so yeah who was you know, you know what else is indecent behavior with a child fucking rock and roll <laughs> yeah that's what they used to say <laughs> like i i do hate that there is this double standard of a of a female school employee fucking kids but it's pretty fun i mean if you were gonna fuck somebody fucking no lunch ladies it's, it's, it's hilarious it's I the think, funniest yeah. person like, you can hilarious. fuck at the school i think that's the part that it's hard to, for it to not be funny <laughs> right right exactly that's i mean you know, you, you know you might get molested but you're also gonna get dinner right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's cooking the, sloppy joes <laughs> yeah the leftover salisbury steak it's like who wants square pizza and it's like well you know what i don't like getting touched but you like square pizza <laughs> listen i like it when y'all are drunk at my house and you know when i let you finger me but also i get to cook all the things i don't get to cook at school and that's really the best part <laughs> it's a really difficult do thing. kids like fish and white wine <laughs> this is a blowfish if i don't cut it right we'll all die <laughs> <laughs> you kids like to live on the edge right <laughs> 
<laughs> my friend Roy Rivas, his grandma was a uh, lunch lady in my elementary school. Oh, okay. And she she made good enchiladas. How were her oh, stag yeah. parties though? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, was I went, she a good kisser? Was I had she, been to her gentle? house. Her house was literally across the street from the school. So oh, okay. we, we went over there. <laughs> set up, set up nicely for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> hey, oh. from the lunch room right out the <laughs> back. Just the red carpet from the school to the house. She really did have the best situation. She could get to work faster than anybody unless you worked from home. You literally crossed the street. She had one you know, of those bouncy The cafeteria houses. was right there across from her. It was crazy. She had the bounce, like, one of those giant bouncy houses in her front yard. That and, rule. And like laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't live in that kind of neighborhood, Joe. Yeah, was- <laughs> Nobody could have a bouncy house. <laughs> we barely had laser tag. How did she ask them to come over and hang? You kids want to get high? Slipped them a note on their lunch tray, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Wrote it on the back of the lunch ticket. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you an extra piece of pizza. You should come smoke pot with me after school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Did y'all have the lunch tickets where you push it in the thing? And it, it, no. Oh, okay. No, we I, had a pad where you had to put in your student ID, and it would like run your account of like money. Uh, okay. We had actual paper tickets that the teacher would keep in like a little box. So I was thinking it'd be funny if she sprayed some perfume and lipstick on it. <laughs> and you're like, ooh, my lunch <laughs> ticket. <laughs> my parents made just enough money to not qualify for free lunch. So I never ate lunch at school. My mom would pack me a lunch my whole. It sucked. Mm. It sucked bad. Yeah. I'd get a turkey sandwich with three slices of turkey and mustard. And that yeah, was my yeah. lunch every day for like in twelve the, years. In middle school, our, the, I brought lunch because the school lunchroom had like visible rats and roaches, and like they would like jump out of the food. So <laughs> no one ate the school food. It would be like hot food out every day, but literally no one. Uh, ate how the food. did it stay open? <laughs> Why would they? It was out? like it, I mean, when I it's now it's like its own rich city school system. But when I lived there, it was like this podunk redneck town with yeah. no money. So it was just like the the old segregated high school became the middle Wait, school. Wait, Alabaster had segregation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was in the South during this the time. So yeah, and so it was no, like, just it was like, like the it's... old segregated high school, and so it was like a hundred gazillion years old, and it was like literally had rats and all and roaches Ugh. and all the food. So we brought everyone brought their own food that day at uh, that school, but the the high school was new, so. When that shit popped off, that food was actually pretty dope. You had, <laughs> you had like these things called what were they? Um, I forget what they were called, but they basically just took like the rolls, fried, fried uh, rolls of tortilla and beef, whatever those are called. Uh, taquitos, taquitos is basically fancy because crispitos is what they called them. That's what it was, crispitos. And it was like Crisp- crispitos, crispito <laughs> day, and like literally there'd be like one teacher who uh, was like really fat and like she would get so excited uh, and she would like run past the students on crispito day. But to be honest, those things were delicious as fuck. I bet, yeah, they were amazing. You'd like pour the chili salsa stuff on there and <laughs> cover it in cheese. It was the best day. We we had I mean, yeah, a, we had the the like the kind of like. I, I don't know uh, Mexican pizzas that they called fiestadas. Fiestada. Yeah, and they were hexagonal. They were like they were like hexagon shaped, and they had. A, I feel like this is the Obama thing where you can't call it the thing because <laughs> it's not the actual product. I, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely went to school before they even gave any thought to like healthiness. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is when we saw the good old food pyramid where they're like, eat bread, nothing yeah. but bread, <laughs> French fries with everything, excellent, <laughs> hot dogs and corn dogs every day if you so choose to have that oh sure why not ketchup that's a veggie that's a vegetable <laughs> a whole giant container of ranch because this is the south and everything must have oh, ranch dude. on it oh. that was the worst people would, like dip their pizza in ranch and it would just be like wow yeah i remember they would have the little section for the like lettuce salad and then they'd give you a separate container of ranch that was basically as big as the lettuce salad <laughs> people like ranch Especially if it's being served at the lunch lady's house oh, yeah. with some wine. <laughs> Especially if it's like all over you. She's pouring <laughs> ranch all over you. <laughs> she just is putting on like student fucks teacher porno. Yeah. yeah. Like, what do you guys think about this one? <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. She bought us Rolling Rock green light and then she came out wearing nothing but a hairnet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just jars ranch everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the fucked up part is she probably did feed them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she doesn't want to go home hungry. I yeah. gotta say, I'd be upset if I went to a party at the lunch lady's yeah, house you and can't I didn't stay overnight and not feed somebody. You know, look, you cannot show me porn and abuse me, but uh, 
you got to feed me. You're the mm-hmm. lunch lady. I'm sorry. This is this is your. <laughs> I like, I like, we're such fat kids. Like, yes, 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 yes. The molestation. Yes, 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 yes. But like, where where's the food? We just be yeah. standing by the fridge like meerkats. We, where, yeah. where is the food? Make with the chicken fingers. <laughs> where is my square pizza, oh, lady? Man. Those chicken fingers. Yeah, you uh, finger me first, and then I'll finger you. All right. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> and by that, I mean chicken. Yeah, by that chicken. <laughs> I do like the idea of just pouring ranch all over yourself unannounced as like seduction just like pouring <laughs> uh, ranch all over yourself it's 2021 she puts a record on and it's just like <laughs> She like pours ranch on you. Like, what's happening? She's doing the flash dance. (laughs) She does like a rockets kick, and and ranch just comes off the end of her foot and splashes everyone in the front row. Beautiful, hello boys. (laughs) (laughs) It seems weird that you would even be able to talk that much to a student as a lunch lady. That's the interactions with those people are usually like less than ten seconds. Well, I mean, I mean, she's probably bribing them with like everyone gets a corn dog. She's like. Like you get two corn dogs. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do you notice you got an extra cookie? You know what that means, right? <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> Ta-ta. Maybe, maybe it's a small town and they know her from church or something, and she's just like, How are you? Yeah. That's you a great kids like Southern Comfort. <laughs> 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 I know you and my son like to get drunk. How would you like to get drunk with uh, another one of the Joneses? <laughs> Dude, there's fucking freaky. I swear to God, one time me and my friend were doing blow in a back like shed of his house, listening to music, and these two old women just a came shed? into the backyard. It was like a shed that had been cur- like converted into like a shed. kind of a apartment sort of thing. Oh my! But it was more like a party <laughs> shed. But uh, yeah, these two random people who are like our friends, not even our friends, but people we knew's mom, just like knocked on the door. And we're like, hey, I heard there's a party back here. And we were just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> you're Chaz's mom and you're fucking knocking on the door. of It's like a backyard. <laughs> we're all paranoid because we're on coke. We don't it know what the like fuck the is happening. It's like to a really bad Skinamax movie. It, it, dude, it felt like that. We probably could have had that happen. But we were too just <laughs> gacked out and just like, what the fuck is happening? How'd they even get back here? <laughs> They're the cops. Get out of here. They're cops. The fucked up part is they introduced themselves as those kids' moms. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm Raymond's mom. <laughs> you kids Raymond's like to party, <laughs> and I want to do cocaine with you boys. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned on here, the uh, mom of my friend who used to buy us all booze is now a QAnon person. Yeah, <laughs> so it's almost as if she makes poor choices. It's cool that she's really taking a stand against child endangerment. There's people who are cool <laughs> to buy minors. One hundred percent. Let's be it fair. But here. the worst part is she the hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah. The worst part is when they want to be around. While while you drink yeah. that's when the trouble <laughs> begins yep yep they're just like yeah i'll do it give me five dollars give me five <laughs> yeah <laughs> just give the man the five dollars and take your shitty skull vodka and go home <laughs> joe did you have a, a drinking place in the woods i didn't get drunk till i was in college oh i was like i got high a few times in high school but mo- mostly i didn't do anything bad yeah did you, have a, of did you have a smoking shit. place in the woods I mean, I literally only smoked that like one pack. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It didn't do anything for me. It made me sick. I tried smoked to a pack, pulled a gun out on some kids. <laughs> <laughs> you learn a lesson pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the the weed was like a few times, but like, you know, one time I got way too high and then had to do a play in front of an auditorium. <laughs> it was so like traumatizing. I just never did it. Again. What play? Until college. Uh, Christmas story. I was I, I was the I was uh, the, uh, the, the 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 guy who buys uh, the sheets or something. I bought something off of somebody that he's watching me when you like you know the Christmas future whatever. So I'm like buying sheets and I was oh a Christmas Carol oh Christmas Carol yeah, yeah I was yeah, like yeah. a Christmas story where you Scott Farkas no a Christmas Carol <laughs> or I was Ralphie the, I was buying the sheets off of somebody very small part but I had like for the first time in my life smoked like actual strong weed so I was like. <laughs> I How like long out before? Of my mind. It's like 45 minutes, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was all kinds of bad. Could so you remember your lines at least? Fuck no. I, I totally flubbed everything. You just had a panic attack, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Because like it was the first time I had ever been insanely high. So like I did that thing where you turn your head and then like a it's a pause and it goes. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> that oh. never happened to me since, but that time it did happen to me. So, yeah, I was like fully freaked out. And then I didn't smoke weed till college. Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. You don't want to be all high in the fucking stage lights. <laughs> no, in front of like everybody, it was bad. Yeah, that thing you're describing, when I smoked weed, I had that exact thing happen to me. And that was the beginning of the end. I was like, I did it like three more times well, it after that. It happened like that one time. So you just got to push know. through. Push through. Yeah, it sometimes it, it. you get a bad reaction to a certain, you know, smoke, yeah. a certain strain or whatever. Well, this was sometimes you smoke shit that's like sprayed. You don't know. Yeah. Well, that's especially this, back in the day. I was going to say, well, this was a true dime bag, like an actual uh-huh. $10 bag of, of weed. Yeah. 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 You probably smoked K2 <laughs> <laughs> spice or something. Spice. <laughs> Got spiced out, y'all. I dude, I was listening to old rap music the other day and they were talking about smoking dimes and shit. And I was like, God damn. The price of inflation. Used to, rappers know? used to smoke shitty weed even. You know, <laughs> everybody had to. It was harder well, to get good weed. It wasn't the whole point like a dime was like the perfect blunt or something, like a dime bag was the, the size of a big blunt. I thought, yeah, a dime bag's about like an eighth or something. So once you pull out all the seeds and it's stems less, it's and less shit. less than an eighth, I remember. It was like, I don't know, me and my friend. Two people smoked the whole thing in like a yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. it's a couple of bowls. Basically. It was yeah. It was like a, a half a fistful. Because I remember buying dime bags of shitty seed weed in high school. Yeah, but every dime bag is a different size. Every dealer has their own dime <laughs> thing. One time we bought weed because we went to the Taco Bell by the Galleria and just stood in the parking lot waiting for other young people to come up and being like. Got any weed? And like they did that for like two hours. And you like, shoulder <laughs> you shoulder tapped weed. Yeah, and that's the, amazing. And then they took us to this apartment complex, and I refused to go in because I was so freaked out. And the other two guys went in because I was like, "You guys are gonna get murdered." <laughs> uh, they went in, and the guy uh, we didn't have enough to buy a whole uh, quarter, so we were just shy. <laughs> of the we kids did, with no money. We, we were just shy of a quarter, so we also had a BB gun, though. So we were like. Uh, it was like <laughs> It was like, uh oh, are you gonna rob them? <laughs> no, it, it, it was like, <laughs> put your hands up, motherfucker. This is a robbery. I'm 13. No, it was like 80 bucks or some shit. And so we each had like 25 or something. So we we're just shy. And they were like, this cash and this BB gun. And the guy shot up his, his apartment wall for like 30 minutes and like, <laughs> like loved us and gave us like a fat bag. And then that was the beat that was so strong it like broke my brain. <laughs> Wait, you mean he just sat there and just shot holes in his wall? Yeah. Dude, that wow. shit sounds tight. Me and my Dude, friend, old school weed dealers. <laughs> We're just the weirdest <laughs> creatures yeah, of, course. of all yeah. time. Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and my friend used to get drunk and then go back to his apartment and just shoot his bookshelf with blow dart. <laughs> Use a blowgun to just shoot darts and try to like hit certain books. And when you're all fucked up, it's just fun to shoot projectile weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have wanted to shoot my own wall, but I definitely have met people who would. Plus, when you're like a, a shithead in your 20s, you're just destructive. I remember breaking, thing, breaking things just to break them. And oh, I had yeah. no real reason to do it. It's just like, because when you're 20, you're a shithead. When you're you 20, break shit. You're just like, I did, well, I just want to see what happens. I know yeah, it's going to break, you, but. Yeah, or you're, gonna, you're doing something stupid. <laughs> Stupid, and they're like, "Why did you do that?" And you're literally only reason is I just want to see what would happen. Oh, I've said on here before. I used to smash glass bottles specifically to uh, make the opening glass break sound of Stone Cold's music, and then I would do. <laughs> Where would you do that? At? Just on the street, you know. It's college. So it's a college like, town. There's bottles on the street. That sounds like a character <laughs> from Beavis. Is and this Butthead. by yourself too? No, we'd be we'd do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Who's we? Well, you know, it's a group of kids yeah. just breaking glass yeah. so they can sing the Stone Cold. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in college, Stone Cold wasn't even a thing. No, anymore. this isn't college. We're like twelve. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was saying it was weird that Joe was like, "I broke stuff in college." I'm like, "I broke stuff when I was very young." I mean, I remember being in Patey the fr- for like what was it sophomore year, and like we would just there would just be shit not bolted down in the dorm, and it was the shittiest, <laughs> dorm. It's the shittiest <laughs> dorm ever, and we would be half drunk anyway, so we'd be like, well, "Let's just go to the top floor and throw it out the window." and see what happens <laughs> and so we did that a lot like they literally it wasn't just us like the entirety of Patey was out of like not bolted down chairs there's a dorm in Tuscaloosa yeah it's like the oldest dorm in Tuscaloosa uh-huh. it used to be a fallout shelter it's like the shittiest <laughs> the shittiest <laughs> dorm oh, of all God. time like I had like green beaten down carpet that's like burned like not burned through but like beaten down to the concrete below it it's, just, it's like solid basically <laughs> yeah it's just solid concrete 
you know, cubicles basically. Yeah. And the communal showers where if you clogged up the drain, it would fill up to water like a swimming pool. Like people, oh, people would do that just because they could also that the water was only hot. You couldn't get cold water. Uh. So, like, <laughs> you'd be taking a shit and your butt would be sweating because uh, the <laughs> toilet water would be like boiling hot. Uh, oh, man. It was just the worst dorm <laughs> ever. So, yeah, we would just trash it all the time. Like there was nothing not bolted down by the end of the year because we would just throw it out the window. <laughs> this is why not? <laughs> so fucking. <laughs> Tight. <laughs> it was just the worst. What would they place. do? Would they even try to replace it? Or nobody no? would even acknowledge that anything was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I, everybody that was like in remotely in charge also lived there. So right. it was just oh, yeah. like people do something and they just be like, all right, well, I do think every, this is where the first time I ever saw people like do lighter explosion burns where you would like set lighters on fire and then like run away <laughs> just in front of the dorm. These fucking morons would just be setting <laughs> lighters on fire and you would just be like giant huge <laughs> explosion flames and people like, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Like it was the, uh, the, the club uh, rugby team guys who are just like famous oh, for their parties would dude, just I be was... doing insane <laughs> shit like that. It was just a sweet have fire alarms all the time. It was also where it had the uh, 24 hour painty diner with the lady who looked like a an old lady Snoop Dogg. So we call her Snoop Dogg mom. <laughs> like, hey, it's Snoop Dogg's mom. And if you call that to her face, like she'd freak out on you. I never did, but I saw her just go off on people for it. Uh, and like, it was just the most insane diner. Cause it was the only thing open at like 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. In Tuscaloosa. So it would be the drunkest people of all time, like literally collapsing <laughs> in the tables, just falling uh. over, throwing up just like the most trashed people <laughs> eating the worst diner food at like 3 a.m. <laughs> Jesus and the, Christ. God knows in the, there'd be parties going on in the hallway so you could never get any sleep. And like I would continually have random dudes just walk into my room if I didn't lock my door because I'd just be blackout drunk. Just, yeah. This is my room. And he's like, no, man, I don't even know you. Uh, it was just <laughs> madness like that. Yeah. I feel like every campus has, if there's multiple dorms on the campus, there is always the one that's just like, yeah. we claim no responsibility. This is a fucking free state. <laughs> We yeah. do not acknowledge what goes on here. I think here. what it was is Patey was the, the dorm they'd put you into if you didn't apply for a dorm by a certain point. So it was all the fuck ups who were just like, oh, yeah. shit, I got to get a dorm. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it is mine. Uh, yeah, it's July. My Mine that I moved. I was at uh, Montevallo for a year, my freshman year, and I moved into Fuller Hall. And uh, my buddy, uh, Johnny Mose, who's a friend of the show, been on the show before, he moved into Fuller and he got there and he opened the door of his room and he'd had, he had a roommate and on the roommate's bed, the roommate wasn't there, but he just opened the door and the roommate's bed was like a fucking AK 47 and a shitload of bullets. And he was what like, I'm going to get another room. So he moved to Napier. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was safe as what he was. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. you can't, you got to befriend the school shooter. So when yeah, they right. go off, <laughs> yeah. you're not affected by it. But yeah, it's like, all right, well, I just definitely don't leave any uh, yogurt expired in the fridge. Cause yeah. That guy will freak out on you. We had guys uh, at Payne. There was like a big, huge raid, ev- like easily every three weeks or so, because there people would be selling weed out of the room. <laughs> I, I mean, I this, this, is pa- this is like past like, statue of limitations, so I'll be honest. I sold weed out of my room for a while, too. <laughs> nice, Hell yeah, bro. Nice. But I wasn't good at it because I would buy like $200 worth of weed. and Because you would walk up to random people and be like, do you need some weed? No, because I'd, I'd, I'd buy $200 from my dealer. Her name was BitBit, a uh, <laughs> little BitBit. And I would meet her at the Galleria, and then she'd sell me like a literal brick of shit weed and like, <laughs> like for $200. And then I would sell exactly... 20 to 35 dollars worth of it and then smoke the rest of myself <laughs> no well, that's just not economically responsible oh, no it was the whole thing was stupid i was just getting insanely high but we that's in Patey, everyone was selling weed basically or, or smoking <laughs> it and so like they would have raids T- like tuscusa pd would be in our dorm like, Whoa. easily once once or twice a month and i had a friend who got arrested and flipped on a bunch of people. Oh, uh, and uh, the reason, the, pussy. the reason yeah. they got him though, was because he was growing weed in his <laughs> closet and not even a little bit, but like an excessive <laughs> amount of weed. <laughs> They're like, wow, room three Oh one's using a lot of water. Yeah. I mean, it was and it's like reeks of weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, not even that just he had, he had grow lamps. Like he had uh-huh. set his closet up with like <laughs> aluminum foil on the sides mm-hmm. and then set up the grow lamps and then set up a fan system to keep it cool in there. Oh my and God. Then, they have to have like 24 hours of light for like the first two months or some shit. Uh-huh. And then it's like 
like has to have so much hours of night, like complete darkness for so long. It's like the real beginning of it's like real important about the light and uh-huh. whatever. So he had his whole closet set up to like with a switch where he could like grow weed and he was like growing a fuckload <laughs> in his closet <laughs> and somebody told on him because you know, it's fucking college. So you're like, man, look at my closet, all my weed and somebody ratted on him who got busted uh, for weed and then he flipped on a bunch of people. Damn. Uh, but like that was the wild shit. Was like his whole closet was. Did full you of, think you were going down? No, because I was smoking all of my. Oh, shit. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Like they would have. They're just no sitting there. Way. Like I got to get rid of this. They would have to find the one person yeah, who sold like, weed to to snitch it was, on you. It was like a standard group of like two or three guys. Bit dude, bit ain't but. flipping. Bitbit Bit is like no. a brick shit Bit house. Bitbit was scary as fuck. There's no way I would have ever snitched on Bitbit. Bit. Like that, she was like legitimately scary as fuck. Like, Bitbit will cut you. She looked like a linebacker. She was very strong. <laughs> and let me know on no uncertain terms, like not to fuck with her. Like it was intense. Uh, I don't uh, even remember. See, that's why you don't deal with college people or anybody who thinks they <laughs> potentially have a future. <laughs> yeah. They'll snitch on everybody in a second. I mean, like, there was one frat guy in Alabama who literally got like a couple of hundred people arrested. Of course. Those are the biggest worms in the fucking world. It was all cocaine, but like he fucking took the whole network down. Daddy, I can't get a felony. (laughs) Yeah, basically. So he just destroyed. Yeah, I got to be the governor someday. Yeah, let me just get all of my friends in trouble to (laughs) save me, to save the thing I legitimately did myself. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. What a piece of shit. It was bullshit because he he got he like got my weed dealer arrested at that time, and that that guy had like the most best weed. All you had to do was (laughs) watch him play FIFA for like an hour, and then he'd he'd sell you weed. (laughs) Sounds good. He had a snake and a spider. (laughs) They've always got a snake. <laughs> Golf clubs, uh, <laughs> so many bongs. He would always try to sell me pills, and then they raided the apartment, and they didn't get the pills or the weed. They just arrested him for like possession and like bongs or something. But <clears throat> they'd put, they would buy like pound bags that would like basically huge Ziploc bags that looked like pillows. Uh, and they'd be full of like dope weed, and they had like huge bags full of like Xanax and tabs and shit. <laughs> and it was all in the oven, and they, the cops missed it all. So it was like he, disa- he disappeared for like two weeks, and he's like, yeah, I got to drop out of college. I'm getting ki- I've been getting kicked out of college because it's like a felony for how much like of this or something he had. Uh, he's like, but they didn't get the drugs, so do you want a bunch of cheap stuff? And it's like, every, every, <laughs> everything must go. <laughs> basically, and everything must go. So you're like going out of business. You sale. pull up to his apartment apartment like two weeks after he got arrested and there'd be like a line of people just like <laughs> talking to each other waiting to go like get the fire like sale. it's fucking filing's basement or yeah. something i mean he was like a major xanax guy so yeah there was like a whole goddamn you know army of people being like well let's get it while we can oh my god that rules jesus what an idiot <laughs> that's not how a going out of business drug sale works that's like you give half of it to somebody you know for a good price and then some of the same thing with somebody else so what you're what you're <laughs> you just get rid of wholesale it yeah so you're, retail this so you're what you're saying is the guy who uh spent thousands of dollars on a snake is not good with his money is what <laughs> yeah you're saying. i'm saying he should at least get his uh, ret- get his re-up money back and just go do something else with his life you yeah. know i miss the days of the drug dealers just being absolute shitheads I, I, let's dude best. i used to buy this weed from this guy named uh t-dub <laughs> <laughs> and he had really good weed and he was a white guy. He wanted to be a rapper. All right. And he, I, I had a white guy rapper. Uh, they well, all, yeah. they all are white guy rappers. <laughs> and he would like, you'd go buy weed, and then like a couple weeks later, you go over, and he'd have like a grill. All of a did sudden, he have, did he have demos and shit? Oh, dude, he oh, would. Yeah. He's the kind of guy who you'd go over to his house, and he'd be playing his own music. We had that guy in Birmingham too. Yeah, he would give you his a CD of his well, CD and be like, ah, oh, pass it around, man. It's my shit. One it'd dude, be horrible political rap. One time he went over. I went over there and he had bought like a new like desktop PC and the screensaver had turned on and the screensaver was just different pictures, like different selfies of him flashing his grill. Yeah. And it was just <laughs> so that's when this when he stopped using the computer is just a slideshow of pictures of himself yeah. trying to look cool. Dude, check out my new compact Presario. But with damn, my grill picks. That yeah. was some of the best weed I can consistently find at that time. Yeah, back before weed was legal, like all the the most reprehensible people were the ones you had to deal mm-hmm. with to get weed. You had to really want to get high to deal with these fucking people. Sometimes, we had one guy yeah. one time. He was like, "Oh, he ran out ran out of town. Why? Oh, because he had like a statutory rape charge." And it's like, "Yeah, that checks out." <laughs> Yeah, the crime usually goes with other crime, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know. I think it makes sense, but it's still kind of the same way. A, a grower is only going to trust so many people. Yeah. You know, 
And they might only trust a white rapper because they'll be like, "This, <laughs> y- you couldn't be an undercover cop and be this yeah. person." <laughs> they always make you do something. If, if they'll make you listen to their rap, they'll make you watch them play video games. They'll want to show you all their spiders. Like show they, you a video on YouTube that's yeah, like fifteen minutes long. You, they they never would let you just come in and go they, out. It could never be an actual business transaction. We had to be friends, and I hated it. I don't know. There's a lot of white cops that rap about how they're good for the community on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> They do, they do 360 <laughs> flips, and you're supposed to forget everything else. They play else. basketball with the kids. They skateboard. They uh-huh. do it all the cops. Uh, there's a great TikTok right now where some guy like goes up to his, this guy and he's like, hey, I remember you from high school. He's a cop now. And he's like, I remember you from high school. You used to sell weed, dude. I used to buy weed for you. And the cops is just like, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know what to say. He's like, oh, you're a cop now. Hey, are you still selling weed? <laughs> the guy's just like so fucking I saw the deer most, in the headlights. The most horrific <laughs> video the other day it was um this guy has got like a sex to his motorcycle and there's cops with their guns out and it's like one of those scenes where they're gonna like shoot the guy and, yeah. and the fiance is freaking out and mm-hmm. she's or not she's not i ruined it but she's not uh the guy's like she's like this is my boyfriend uh don't shoot him or whatever and he's like get the gun get the gun get the gun he's she's like i'll get the gun from him don't shoot so she like it's tense yeah and then the cops are like she goes for it she pulls up and then the guy leans up and they're like behind my dread interlock your fingers whatever and like the guy's rearing up and it's so tense and scary and then the guy pulls out a wedding ring and the cops put their guns down start laughing everybody's like clapping and i was like what the fuck is this this fucking yeah and she's in this i've seen this she's in the moment of like trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and she's also doing that thing all women do when they get proposed too early to start crying instantly yeah where so she was in the midst of like both of those things she forgives them instantly and i'm just like this is the most intense that's it <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the relationship that, yeah it's the most insane shit i've ever seen in my life and what the how, fuck what cops are like yeah i'll put a gun on on you and so you can propose to your fiance and scare the shit out of her because she'll think i'm gonna yeah. shoot you to oh death i was God. trying to figure out the situation too it looked like they were with like a, a group of motorcycle riders yeah, and it yeah. made me think he might have known some cops. Of course. The All those guys are thing. fucking bootlickers. Yeah. But the but thing the, is this, it's a black guy. Oh, the, yeah. The, 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 the oh, guys that's like, even worse. Yeah, what? it's crazy. The, the, co- what? the cops yeah. are white with guns on the black guy and his, his oh, fiance is he's there. freaking and out she, thinking he's about to get murdered. Yeah, she thinks her, 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 her yeah. boyfriend is about to die by police murder and then he just sits up and like gives her a wedding it's bananas. that's the worst thing i've ever heard yeah. I, I watched she it said like yes. five times to like, <laughs> she said yes and then the, does the like crying i'm so happy thing and I'd, I'd be like no i would set the whole place on fire fuck you that's insane i would tell the cops to just go ahead and shoot him yeah like that's fucking <laughs> fuck this bananas dude. this is horrible i had to watch it like five times till i just convinced myself it wasn't like a fake video because yeah who would do that yeah what cop is like i'm gonna keep my the, job and the cops are like chuckling about it too they see the camera being like, oh, like, oh, we, we helped it's with funny because you you thought you knew it was gonna happen because yeah. we're terrible it's yeah. funny because i could shoot him and murder him and it would be terrible but like i didn't because it's a joke it's yeah. what <laughs> and you guys love each other now <laughs> that's good we come to your wedding <laughs> bro bro she would like die for you bro like that's good she said yes and you now you know she would like not let me shoot you bro <laughs> That's fucked. That's super yeah, fucked. Yeah, it's fucked. Oh my it's god. I, I, I was convinced it wasn't real, but I, apparently it is. Uh, it that, looks, it's too fucked up to be real. Or I to just, be the, fake. And all know? those people clapping are like, this is such a wonderful day. And it's like, what planet they were, are they were all from? They were all in on it. So for some reason, they also for, didn't just be like, dude, this is a bad Like idea. all their family <laughs> members like get out of the car like, surprise! That's aren't you their, happy? Like, biker friends. How do you even broach this? Is there like an email going around like, guys, I got this idea. Tell me if you oh. want to help me proposed to my girlfriend by God. pretending to be murdered by police <laughs> it's fucking crazy it's a chain it's email that going amongst it's a thread it's a facebook it's definitely a facebook messenger thread amongst <laughs> like biker boys <laughs> biker boys yeah. b boys yeah oh damn. wow that's sad it's bananas you Ugh. know what else is sad i figured out bam margera's lowest entertainment like moment uh-oh 2013 2014 bam's badass game show what's up this is bam margera and you've probably seen me make a jackass of myself for as long as i can remember but i thought it would be fun to see what happens when people like you attempt some of the stupid ass stunts that me and my buddies do all the time with the help of my pals seth and tim we're going to put everyday people into ridiculous situations what's in it for them you ask how about a chance to win ten thousand dollars welcome to bam's badass game show 
six episodes on TBS. Oh, it lasted a no. month. Bam's Wait, already it, like fat and on drugs. Does oh, it air? No. It's it's it got taken off after a month. It was on TBS for one month. There's six <laughs> what, episodes. What, what's the premise? It's a game show where like four people compete. And in wacky jackass style challenges, Bam doesn't do anything in the show. He's just yeah. there, like talking shit. It's probably comatose. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know he's dude. There. He looks like he's on heroin. Like his yeah. eyes, his eyes can't stay open in some parts. Yeah. I mean, it's it's probably, fucking crazy. Yeah. This is gonna have like pot marks from all the injections. I was gonna say, <laughs> this is like we're we're getting into like fuckface unstoppable years, like those years. Basically, there's like stupid like games or. There's one where people are like on treadmills and right behind them is a pool full of dirty water and they have to do <laughs> questions. And if they get one wrong, the treadmill speeds up and uh, then the last person to not fall in the water wins. Uh, and there's another one where they spun these people around on a chair a bunch of times and had them go through an <laughs> obstacle course Jesus. where they had to grab different sandwich ingredients and then at the end give a sandwich to Bam Margera. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> bring him a fucking sandwich. Dude. Uh, this is definitely dude, his brainchild. It, uh, he's a complete dick. All the like pranks are meant to be. He's or, like make him get skateboards and skateboard yeah. into a plate uh, glass uh, window the, or whatever. Dude, they put some. They put people through a plate glass window. Yeah, I'm not even, <laughs> not even lying. They, they put them on thing and they're just like, okay, we're going to throw you through a wall, a plate glass window, and then you got to jump through a ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even interesting to watch because it's so like overly produced, like yeah. set up bullshit. Uh, but on the sandwich one, the first person like gives it. Bring me a sandwich. It's so funny. He, he, the first person gives it to him very gracefully and everybody else just like kind of throws it <laughs> at his face. Like literally, I think I would <laughs> chuck it into his face. I think they realized he was an asshole pretty early on. And the first the second person uh, to do it was this girl who I could tell was just like creeped out by him because Bam was trying to be all like, hey, cutie, like yeah, shit yeah. like that. And she just fucking smashed the sandwich on him. He's like, hey, you messed up my clothes. And the other two people did the exact same thing. <laughs> like, yeah, you're an asshole, Bam. I'm sure the producer was like, hey, throw the sandwich at him. It'll be funnier. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully. God. Bam's just like nodding I'm off. Sure, they like, need yeah, something the, to the happen. Sh the showrunner is like an actual real life professional and is realizing this show is absolute dog shit. Right, so they're right. just like trying to manufacture something interesting. Well, the, the, the thing is he has a crew when yeah, it starts yeah. and it's this guy named Seth and this other guy whose name I don't even know and they're people you've never seen before in your right, entire right. life. They're the guys who come up with all the wacky prank guy, it's or like a, it's competition his, prank things. It's his new friends he met in the, the, the mm -hmm. bathroom of the, the coke house. Yeah, dude. <laughs> the only person who is still in the show at that point is Brandon Novak, who's oh, a yeah. known heroin addict. Yeah. And at one point, he like Brandon Novak kind of shows how to do the stunts. And I thought one, you were going to say shows you how to do heroin. <laughs> he could do that, <laughs> too. My craziest stunt. <laughs> but uh, he shows people how to do the stunt. And then at one point, there's like other people that kind of show, show him how to do the stunt. And then some guy just has a crazy name. It's like, this is Rodolfo time travel. He's the drummer for my band. Hey, I was about to say some Norwegian yeah. fucking death metal guy. And it's just like, God damn it, Bam, you're fucking an alcoholic uh, hillhead and you have a horrible band. You have a TBS show that's canceled <laughs> as fuck. Like, God damn, what a I sad... Gotta, it's on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. I'm gonna, it's I'll, really boring for the most part. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll check it out, although I... I, I Bam's gotta, badass game show. Bam's bad, I, it's gonna be hard to beat him. Just when you be, lose, people go, I got Bam. Uh, what? <laughs> then, no. Dude, there's like, it's a show where there's sound effects. I'm going to drink a bunch and fall off a skateboard. I'm Bam Margera and I can't stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Red Bird for sending me a. Yeah, yeah. The slide whistle is still good. Slide whistle. This uh, is the same one they used on Bam's badass game show. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> this is Novak. He's going to do heroin. We're going to crash you into a. At one point, they crash people through like a pyramid of those blue bear, like you know the blue pa plastic barrels. Yeah, yeah. Those things are pretty heavy, and they just slam people into them right before they slam into a fucking plate glass thing, <laughs> and then have them jump through fire, uh, which they barely. One of them barely made it through. Her feet like <laughs> basically landed on the bottom part of the ring that as might, she was going through. That might be uh, what did in the show. TBS is like, yeah, we can't cover immolation. It's oh, just not... what did in the show was the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that anybody who likes Bam Margera would even watch TBS isn't the idea of that is insane. <laughs> oh boy. Well, this was fun, everybody. Sam, where can people find you online? Slam harder on TikTok and Twitter. Joe? 
Joe M F Reigns on on the platforms. All right, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley, and of course you can go to prowrestlingtees.com slash the goods pod. Buy yourself a shirt, make you look skinny on TV, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Woke up in the morning, put on my new plastic glove. <laughs> Serve some reheated Salisbury steak with a little slice of love. I got no clue what the chicken pot pie is made of. Just know everything's doing fine down here in Lunch Lady Land. Well, I wear this net on my head Cause my red hair is falling out I wear these brown orthopedic shoes Cause I got a bad case of the gout I know you want seconds on the corn dogs But there's no reason to shout Everybody gets enough food down here in the magical a long lady lamb Well, yesterday's meatloaf is today's sloppy joes And my breath reeks of tuna And there's lots of black hairs coming out of my nose Oh, hoagies and grinders, hoagies and grinders Navy beans, navy beans, navy beans, navy beans. Hoagies and grinders, hoagies and grinders. Navy beans, navy beans, meatloaf sandwich. Slop it, go, stop it, stop it, go, 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 all the pepperoni pizza was a looking at me. It screamed, why do you burn me? And serve me up cold. I said, uh, I got the spatula. Just do what you're told. Then the liver and onions started joining the fight. And the chocolate pudding pushed me away to all its might. And the chalk suey slapped me and it kicked me in the head. It's called revenge lunch, ladies, said the garlic bread. I said, what did I do to make you all so mad? You got flabby arms and your breath is bad. Then the green bean said, you better run and hide. But then my friend, Sloppy Joe, came and joined my side. He said, if it wasn't for the lunch lady, the kids wouldn't eat you. You should be shaking her hand and saying, pleased to meet you. She gives you a purpose and she gives you a goal. You should be kissing her feet or kissing her more. Now all the angry fools just leave me alone. And we all live together in a happy home. A thanks to Slobby Joe, a a Slobby Joe, yeah. Slobby Joe, a a Slobby Joe, yeah. Slobby Joe, a a Slobby Joe, yeah. Slobby Joe, Slop, Slobby Joe. Well, me and Sloppy Joe got married. <laughs> We got six kids and we're doing just fine. <laughs> Down in lunch, lady. Lunch.